Welcome to Sleepless in St. Canard, where nostalgia replaces REM cycles. I'm Kitty. And I'm Edge, reporting to you live from underneath a blanket. Which is interesting because we haven't slept in 30 years. This is a podcast about the 90s classic cartoon, Darkwing Duck, where everything's made up and the origins don't matter. We're in the course of a single episode, entire planets explode, genies have RVs, child superheroes die on screen to the distant future to immediately slam it back into the past and the secret origins of Darkwing Duck. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so uh, we watched a thing, but first you had a thing that you wanted to talk about, Ange. Yes, I have a bit of a news segment to do. This is Ange reporting from Sleepless in St. Canard. Today in Deck Related News, we have a merchandise report to bring to you. It was announced quite recently that a new Q-Fig quantum mechanics figure is being released. There is already a Darkwing Duck available for pre-order, but now they have announced that they're doing Nega Duck, and they've posted pictures of it, and he looks fabulous. He does, he does look really good. Some of the merchandise, particularly anything that has to do with statues or models, I find they always don't quite get stuff right, the features on Darkwing, like his eyes or his bill or his little fluffy cheeks mm -hmm. but this one is pretty solid yeah he looks pretty cool and i mean you know like the dark wing looks nice but it, it's a really nice negaduck too and it's not i mean basically it is just a recolor but there he's in a slightly different pose so that's pretty cool yeah so if you are interested in obtaining one of these bad boys quite literally the website is called quantum mechanics and it is a Negaduck Qfig at qmxonline.com. And it's only available for pre-order. And the pre-orders, as of the time that this podcast episode drops, the pre-orders will already have become available, presumably, because they said that it would be Friday, July 23rd would open up for pre-ordering. And I think they said there's only 2,000 of them available. So you got to rush and pick them up while you still can. Pre-orders are estimated to ship in September 2021 and the price is listed as $29.95, I'm assuming US dollars. Get them while they're rotten. Specifications. Height, five inches. <laughs> Material. <laughs> Material is PVC. And yeah, that is our merchandise update. I always get excited when there's Negaduck merch because when does that happen? It's not very often. It's, it's very infrequent, yeah. And then they are usually recolors of just Darkwing, mm. but this time it's not. Like, they're similar, but the poses are actually different. Like, they're both standing on a statue, I like assume. Like a gargoyle. Yeah, like a duck gargoyle, a duck goyle. Mm. But they're doing different poses with their arms and I actually think Negaduck's facial expression looks better than Darkwing's, personally. Yeah, Darkwing usually has a derpy expression whenever they try to... Yeah, exactly. Him. And the Darkwing one is only nineteen ninety five, so apparently Negaduck is more expensive. He should be. It doesn't say, actually, when the Darkwing Duck version is going to be available. I assume probably around the same time as the Negaduck version. News segment. That is exciting news. It's always good when there is fun merch to get that looks halfway decent. Yeah, and now I have an event segment. Uh-oh. <laughs> Back to you again, Ange. Thank you, Ange. So, I just wanted to quickly plug that August 2021 is going to be Darkwing Duck Original Character Month. For those of you who have no idea what that is... Fan characters, original characters, whatever you want to call them. It is a whole month dedicated to that. And I have put up a prompt for every day of the month with various themes. And you can either draw it or write it, paper mache it, whatever your heart desires, related to your Darkwing Duck characters and other people's characters. So if you are interested in that, go over to our website, Sleepless dash saintcanard.com and I have put up an announcement with the image that has all the prompts. 
and there is a tag. I believe it is hashtag Darkwing OC month, which you can use on Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, wherever. Pillow for it. Does anyone use pillow for it? I'm sure some people do. Some people do. Tag them so we can see them. We want to see them. Yeah, we want to see your pretty, pretty characters. So, yeah, I, that is it for segments, the event segments, news segments, what have you. Back to you, Kitty. Thank you for being out in the field and doing it for all your hard work. But today, dear listeners, is all about Angie's pick for random alternate universe episode slash Taz Stone says <laughs> continuity. The <laughs> secret origins of Darkwing Duck, which is on Disney Plus season one, episode 33. In the tradition of Disney Plus, it has a fantastic blurb. I'm looking forward to this. Yes, I'm ready. You're ready. Okay. It's, I don't know who wrote it, but it says, an archaeologist <laughs> tries to piece together DW's past. What? <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> oh, um, so it's only just proving that even Disney employees have no idea what this episode is about. An archaeologist. Uh, yeah. And then I went and I, I tried to think of, like, if maybe this was just, like, something that got shuffled around and it was the description for another episode. And I could not, like, I clicked on all the ones that I could think of and scrolled through and looked at all the, and nothing. So, an archaeologist. Well, okay, then. Yes, yes. So, unless there is an alternate universe where this episode is different and there's an archaeologist involved... It's uh, that's that's how Disney wanted it to be, I guess. Intriguing. Intriguing. So, do you want to give us the rundown of this episode, a little summary of sorts? Yes, yes. So, Secret Origins of Darkwing Duck is the very true and one hundred percent accurate and canon origin story for Darkwing Duck. Absolutely. True facts all the way through. Takes place in the future. I believe it's 200 years into the future with Mm -hmm. a couple characters that we will talk about. And we learn about the secret origins of Darkwing Duck through a series of flashbacks told by a janitor who looks awfully familiar. (laughs) There's all kinds of wild stuff that happens. We've got neglectful parents, death, explosions, Apocalypse, spaceships, Herb Muddlefoot as a genie. Yep! Y'all are probably thinking, wow, once she gives more context throughout the episode, these things will make more sense. (laughs) And I'm here to tell you, (laughs) that is not going to be the case. But I actually (laughs) quite enjoy this episode. Granted, I am biased it, it is a Negadec episode, and pretty much any episode he is in, I will enjoy by default. And it's our first one that we get to talk about on the podcast. Yeah, but I do actually like this episode too, because it is so ridiculous and nonsensical, and I think it just perfectly sums up what I love about this show, where there's just anything can happen, and pretty much anything does happen. I'm getting into the confessional here to lay my sins out on the table and those sin- those sins are that i am a negaduck fan a very huge negaduck fan and any episode that he has appeared in i have watched probably 20 plus times over no exaggeration so i can recall almost every line from these episodes verbatim and it is also why my superpower is the ability to identify any screen cap of him from any episode at any time stamp just by looking at a cropped photo of his elbow. I've had a few people test me on this, and so far I've had, I think, almost a 100% accuracy rate. But I digress. Mm. Despite having watched these episodes over and over again, I've never quite analyzed them before, and I've been doing Mm. that, especially since you started bringing up the backgrounds and just small things like the animation. So when I watched this episode, there was a ton of stuff that I actually never noticed before because I was just kind of passively watching it. So I'm looking forward to getting into this because I have some observations to make, and I'm sure you do too. I do. I have a couple, uh, but I don't really know that I have too many background things. I'm interested to hear what what your your eagle eyes have spotted. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I'm excited. 
first of all, so we start in the, you know, very futuristic future, which is basically like Jetson Central. And the museum itself that we like zoom in on, not so much in the opening scene, but later on, is looks like a duck head. Yes. But it looks like a gizmo duck head. Funny to me. It's like a feature <laughs> robotic like, head or something. Yeah, so like it's it for me it's like that kind of looks like a gizmo duck, you know, head, which to me I think is hysterical if that's the case, because that just means that Darkwing's museum is shaped like a <laughs> gizmo duck. And that just tickled me, really, really did. But yeah, so at the opening of our episode, we have our our tour guide going through the building, talking about the last and most unique of all mythological heroes, Darkwing Duck. And the second I heard this guy's voice, this tour guide's voice, I'm like, I think that that's Rene Albergenois. And then it got to the credits, and it was. So point Mm -hmm me who is that he, well he sadly passed but he was like a character actor but he was i think for, for me anyway i know him most as odo from star trek deep space nine oh. he used the the shape shifter chief security i think and he was also my, my second favorite character of his is the drunk skeleton from the last unicorn <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> He was also the chef in The Little Mermaid, the, the Le Poisson guy. So it was nice to hear him. I'm like, oh, my God, I know that voice. That little tidbit aside, and that is not the first voice in this episode that, or I mean, this is not the only voice in this episode that surprised me. But we'll get to that as that comes along later. But we are introduced to also our first Hunker episode even though that this is not Hunker as we know him because this is in the future. So he's Honkuloid, right? Honkulon, I thought. Honkulon, yeah, he's Honkulon. And then there's Goslin, who's Gozaloid. Yes. And they are very futuristic. They are floating around, and I can't wait for that to happen. I'm going to have to tough it out for like the next 170 years so that I don't have to walk around anywhere and I can just float. But also they are very like jetsoned out and honker has like little flare on his glasses that i thought was pretty neat i totally rock those i'd wear them and he's got a little mohawk which i thought was pretty cute and goslin's just basically wearing a bush roots haircut she really is and yeah there is no gravity in the future apparently maybe the moon exploded and it messed with everything i don't know but they do walk around, and then the janitor is walking around. So I think it's just they can float, so they do. Did you notice when he was doing his little talk, he mentions the show. He, he mentions Darkwing Duck, the TV show, and he talks about the primitive people who used to watch this show that had smaller brains, and they became <laughs> extinct. So was there an yep. apocalypse in St. Canard at some point in time that wiped out everybody and for some reason, these new beings of the future are not related to them. I, and I was wondering that, too. I don't know. I, I guess so. And the only record of the society that came before it is Darkwing's own record. So who even knows? And then apparently a TV show was made. and On his mythic exploits. I, it's his mythic exploits. That's a, um, that's a phrase that gets dropped many times in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Would you like to speculate about what happened? In the apocalypse? Yes. Let's see. Comet guy. (laughs) Full stop. (laughs) Full stop. (laughs) Probably him at some point. Launchpad maybe at some other point. Maybe Darkwing Duck himself, you know, doing Darkwing Mm. things. I'm just going to blame all the characters for this. Okay. Well, I think you got a good chunk of them. Keep going. I guess climate change. Just in general. Just to be topical here, climate change. We should have all listened to (laughs) Neptunia when we had the chance. We should have. Or Neptunia. I wonder if Liquidator and Bushroot are still alive. They flood the planet and they are now kicking it with the Buzz Lightyear. Mm -hmm. How about you? I have one standing theory and it's that everybody took a bath with their toaster at the same time. Oh, except Megavolt, right? Well, he rounded up all the uh, toasters after and then took a bath with all those all those toasters and then everyone was gone rest in pieces 
Rest, rest in toasty, toasty pieces. That's how the world should end. So what happens next, Kitty? Uh, well, let's see. So, of course, during the course of this little five-second tour that we get, Rosaloid has to sit in the chairs that are just ripped out of Drake's house that get him to Darkwing Tower and uh, accidentally trigger the little Basil of Baker Street statue and her and Anki Lon get stuck, like, I guess, in the little crawl space thing in there. And uh, no one comes looking for them. The children just get lost in the museum and then fed to the spinning chairs. And seven hours later, the, the janitor, who looks suspiciously like a certain masked hero, Comes uh, whistling along with his little Fantasia science-y cleaning crew and frees them. No one ever comes looking for lost children in museums. That was actually a note I made was nobody noticed these children missing for seven hours. Maybe in the future the children just run their own lives. They don't have parents. Well, she does yell about how she's going to call her lawyers, so <laughs> maybe these, these children are are more advanced than we give them credit for, and our, our tiny brain pans can't comprehend it. And instead of saying keen gear, Gosloid says kinetic gear. Uh, <laughs> she, I took count, she only says it twice. So, there's that. And she is, of course, super into hearing about, you know, Darkwing Duck, and Honkulon is super unimpressed about all of it. But, of course, this janitor just happens to know everything, and is not obviously making it all up as he goes along. And this is where the real meaty bits of our episode come in, where it is basically just a giant Superman ripoff for this next section. Before uh, we start we... that, I yeah. noticed a funny observation. When Honky Lon is saying that it's just a myth and it's not real, the not Drake is like, what? And he does that thing, you know, where they, like, stick their finger in their ear and then they twist like they haven't heard properly. Except he doesn't mm -hmm. have an ear hole. So he just puts his <laughs> hand up to his head with his finger up to his forehead and does the motion. <laughs> and it makes the little squeaky sound. <laughs> oh, yes. And somewhere in there, Honkulon's allergies are acting up and the janitor gives him a purple handkerchief. Foreshadowing. So yes, we get to hear about that, you know, Darkwing wasn't from our planet. Don't ask logical questions about birth certificates, honker. Jeez. And we get to go see where Darkwing is truly from, which is Krypton. I mean, Zipdon. <laughs> which uh, is a strangely fruit and vegetable themed planet. I was um, so upset because his home is a giant banana and there are spots on that banana. And was I not just <laughs> complaining like three days ago about how I absolutely cannot stand bananas as soon as they have spots on them? They are dead to me. Mm -hmm. I cannot eat them. They make me want to vomit. Well, this you know what? what? Zipton is also dead to you now, too. Because, <laughs> uh, spoilers, it explodes very shortly after we see it. <laughs> But it, even the planet itself looks like kind of like a, a head of cabbage or something. Yeah. It's weird. And from here we meet Drake's father, who is Drake L, <laughs> which is Jim Cummins doing his best Marlon Brando impression. Because Marlon Brando was jor -El? I don't know Superman all that well. He's Superman's dad in the Christopher Reeves 1970s Superman movie. So that's a tidbit for you if you did not know that. It's the end of the world! Yes. <laughs> he's, he's leaning into it. And I was very confused about hit the mom's voice because she kind of sounds like she's been fed a Casio keyboard a little bit. <laughs> yeah, she does. <gasps> What's happening? Drake L, what is it? Not bad news, I hope. But then I looked it up, or she her name was in the credits, and I was like, wait a second. And it's Zelda Rubenstein, who was the medium lady from the poltergeist. His house is clean. <laughs> you ever seen that? A long time so, ago. But she's, she's got, like, a weird little voice, and I'm, I'm just, I can't get over it. She apparently was in a few episodes of Darkwing Duck in the Disney afternoon shows. She did 
voice work for them. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, welcome Zelda. But yeah, she's, I don't know, she sounds weird to me as Drake's mom. So yeah, so Marlon Brando, Drake L is coming to secure passage to Earth, or no, to Gribble Fitz, because that's a planet, I guess, <laughs> for his, his baby, his, his little weird buck-toothed baby, which is actually Darkwing as an infant, and he's talking about how his terrible evil brother threatened the council or what have you that you know, he was going to blow up the planet if they didn't make him the Grand Pooba of everything. Do you remember what the exact title was? Grand Pooba of the Wild. I don't know how to <laughs> speak accents. That's, no, that's perfect. That's perfect. So yeah, so Grand Pooba of the World. And uh, mysteriously, the planet is about to explode. You know, he gives the, the baby the gas gun and might come in handy one day as he sends his son off. Did you notice to... that baby DW changes character designs? Yes. Like he's like a little nugget in wrapped in a blanket and then he's basically just a, a small full grown version of himself. <laughs> he just morphs like halfway through the scene. They put him in the <laughs> ship and suddenly he looks like yeah, a tiny just Drake. Yeah. And he looks very sad as his rescue rocket blasts off. But then we get to the better part of this whole segment <laughs> where it just flips to the opposite side of the planet <laughs> where we see Drake L's brother, his evil brother, and they live in a giant clove of garlic and that made me laugh <laughs> really hard. <laughs> I was like, that's perfect. That's the perfect home. And his dad is raging about how stupid his brother is and the only reason why the planet is about to explode is because Drake L sat on the detonator, <laughs> which, you know, checks out. I was kind of hoping he would be doing an evil Marlon Brando impression, but he's just basically Negaduck Light. He really is. A bomb never would have gone off if my idiot brother hadn't sat on the detonator. It's just so funny because he's immediately like you know that he's just trying to save his own skin like he has no intention of putting his wife or that baby in that rescue rocket but he's just raging about everything that's going like packing his stuff negaduck's mom has some serious mama crack shell vibes going on <laughs> she's got her hair rollers and the you know the bathrobe and she's just kind of like flinging the baby around the baby's just being a terror because of course he is so this episode is complete nonsense, but you cannot tell me this is absolutely what Negaduck's parents were like. Negaduck, just look at him. That is the face of a man whose mother carried him around by his diaper like he was a sack of trash and just <laughs> swung him around carelessly while screaming at her husband all the time. And he probably killed them both. It's true. And she's great too. She's just complaining. So this is Zelda at Rubenstein again. Didn't I tell you it was a stupid idea? It wasn't my fault. What if it goes off, I said? What will you be Grand Pooba of then, huh? The Grand Pooba of Rebel. Oh, very impressive. <laughs> They're great. And of course, you know, he's like, oh, you know, so long, whatever, great marriage, goodbye. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? To Gribble Fritz! So long was a nice marriage. Hate to see it end this way. <laughs> and she, like, drags him out of the rocket and throws the baby at him and tries to save herself. But, of course, the most formidable and evil of them all is the nigga baby. As he blasts away, he gives them a victory raspberry. And, uh, nigga dad is like, well... No, oh, well, look at it this way. Our planet's only blowing up on Gribble Fritz. They'll have to deal with him. <laughs> it's basically like they're about to die, but they're like, well, at least we don't have to deal with him. That's parental love right there. That is it's beautiful. True Negaduck essence right there. Yes, and he's such a little dick, too. He's great. And then, like, uh, well, they didn't get to Gribble Fritz because the rockets collided in Orbert. Well, Orbert. <laughs> no, Orbit. <laughs> And there's the one thing that I really remembered about this episode is the one little throwaway line that 
baby Darkwing says is Santa Driver. And then he gets, you know, a raspberry in response from Nega Baby because, that's, of course, he does. That's basically the Disney friendly version of flipping the bird. Yes, it is. So that's the, the start of Hero of Our Hearts, his crash landing onto Earth and his humble beginnings. And he just happens to, of course, crash into a monastery at the feet of the most venerable one. Or Venny for short, mm. as he says. Who immediately picks him up and gives him the honorable name of Stinky. And, he sniffs uh, him. He does. Well, I mean, to be fair, that baby was in that rocket for a really long time, probably. And he probably did stink. I will give him that. Also, he was living in a giant spotted banana. Even worse. He was doubly stank. <sighs> so, yeah, so that's it's a, a whirlwind of a start. Of course, you know living at a monastery means that we get to have a bit of a montage of how Drake grows up there, but he doesn't really because he's a baby and then he's like his full grown self, but talking like a baby. (laughs) It's the first thing in this episode to unsettle me and it's not the last, but he just, you know, we go through our little montage of him being like, I found inner peace. And basically he's just getting whacked in the face with a cane because he keeps doing stupid things and but of course he learns how to fight using martial arts which is basically just flinging around his arms and legs in rapid succession like there's (laughs) there's no rhyme or reason to it really but he he wins look over your shoulder there's cannibals and then he kicks a guy hey look cannibals huh <laughs> I can't believe we fell for the old cannibals over the shoulder gag. <laughs> but stinky, there are cannibals. Really, cannibals? And then he looks really excited about there actually being cannibals. Yes, but there are no cannibals. There's just another ass kicking from uh, Venny, the most venerable one. Then the straw that breaks the venerable one's back is that. Drake is, er, Stinky. I keep calling him Drake. This is Stinky. Just starts, like, dribbling a basketball around. He's like, who wants to shoot some hoops? And he's like, it's time for you to go. <laughs> you need to get out of here. <laughs> and he's just like, go find the home in your heart. And just kicks him out into a desert. An endless <laughs> desert. <laughs> so, I don't know if, is it now? No, okay. So then he goes to the desert. And uh, immediately is dying of thirst and falls down a dune and hits his head on a bottle. And, of course, you know, a genie lamp because it looks like one. And he goes to drink from it. And I totally forgot the herb model foot. The year of my heart, my love was in this episode. And I thought like, so. I thought you I thought you didn't remember because when we were talking about this episode in the previous recording... You were like, I don't remember anything about this episode. And you didn't bring up Herb. So I was like, she doesn't remember. So I I kept quiet. I I kept quiet. So it would be a surprise for you because I knew you would be very excited. I was trying to figure out how to meld the words Herb and Genie together. And I came up with Heeny. (laughs) (laughs) Which which is not my best word. But he's he's, he's fantastic. I love him. And uh, he's got, you know, the the whole, you know, typical Genie getup. But his... Fruit bedazzled Hawaiian shirt is now a robe. And also, Stinky and drank him. He did. He drank him, and then the smoke came out of his ears that he has. And uh, from the mists, the man, the myth, the legend emerged Herb Muddlefoot. I watched this episode twice, and my brain is so fried. Like, why is he mad at Stinky? Like, he tries to, to step on him. Maybe because he drank him. Oh, I guess. So, yeah, so he, he tries to stomp him, but of course Stinky is the master of martial arts and and stops him. And then he just, like, lays him out, and it just made me laugh because Herb just goes, Oh, my sacro <laughs> uh, That was my only note for that scene. <laughs> and 
I just love his delivery so much. He's just so good. Uh, so, of course, now he gets his three wishes because of Genie. And he just, you know, wishes for a cool outfit from Cuckoo Cola and the secret of Heaney's sweet, smoky entrance. So that's how he's able to do his I Am the Terror things, according to this totally true and accurate origin story. And then after he, you know, gets his wishes, Heaney is just like, well, I gotta go pick up my RV at the shop. See you later. (laughs) (laughs) Go on. So it's like, her, my love. So genies have RVs. And how long has that RV been in the shop if his bottle's been in the desert all this time? That, That RV is super done. But from here, we blast back into the future where Gauze and Honker call the janitor out on dropping the far more interesting part of the storyline, which is what happened to Nega Baby. <laughs> and I am so upset that we didn't get to see any of what happened to him because uh, the janitor is like, what other baby? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, the evil cousin. Uh, well, he was picked up by space pirates. I was like, that's a whole show in itself. Negaduck and the space pirates? Yes, please, I'd watch that. Absolutely. Yeah, so... Negaduck, raised by space pirates, and just so happens to find his way to Earth as well in a accurately colored, you know, spaceship that in his branded colors, and sees his doofus cousin. <laughs> the first thing he says, "Oh my God, what is the line?" It's so funny. It made me laugh. He's like, his the first thoughts were, <laughs> just goes, "What a sap." Classic Negaduck. It's perfect. Because he's like, you know, building it up. His first thoughts is, what a sap. And then he beams him up because uh, he's got to, I guess, try to convince his cousin to join him. He does this in the most Negaduck way ever of just swiveling around in his chair, in his evil chair swivel. And I noticed later on, I didn't notice in this scene, that he just has a lever that does it. So he just has an evil (laughs) swivel lever. (laughs) on this chair which is which is great so he's like hey i'm taking over the world want to come and Stinky's like nah so nex is just like well all right then and drops him out of the trap door of his spaceship and that's that's uh that's their their whole interaction until their epic showdown at the end did you notice that even though negaduck has a lower voice in this episode he still sounds younger Yes, I did, actually. He's not as deep as he usually is. Yeah, like, his voice is still different from Darkwing's voice, but at the same time, he sounds like, I don't know what age they're supposed to be. I assume teenagers or early adult. I think that was a conscious decision by Jin, which is interesting. The amount of skill to be like, yeah, he has a low voice, but I'm going to somehow make him sound young anyways. Tell you what. You help me conquer this planet, and I'll let you breathe. To which Stinky naturally replied, Not on your sweet patootie, pal. You're too good for my own good, cousin. Well, yeah, I mean, he, I guess he kind of has gone through the whole age spectrum, too, because we've got the janitor, which is old Darkwing, who is definitely like Drake's voice, just a little bit older. It feels a little bit more Winnie the Pooh-ish. Mm-hmm. It's a mix, more of a mix of like herb light <laughs> with Winnie the Pooh flavoring seasoning sprinkled on top. And then, you know, the babies and the, you know, Stinky and Negs as whatever age they are. Because they don't really say how long he was at the monastery. I just kind of assumed that he was, you know, there for as long as, you know, like how old Drake is in the show proper. But I guess that's not really because that would be a, a long time to be at that monastery like 30 something years before he decided to become a superhero i'm gonna say 18 is my guess yeah I, I'll, I'll agree with that that sounds good and then we have a higher register negaduck because of it that makes sense to me uh it's canon it's happened so as stinky is plummeting to his presumed death his fall is broken on the nose of the thunder quack and inside is a couple familiar faces one is Goslin in her second appearance in this episode where she is a superhero character. 
named the Mysterious Masked Avenger of Evil, but just Avenger for short. And Launchpad McQuack, her sidekick, an all-around nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> Launchpad is just typecast all the time. And of course, she sees that Stinky has her one weakness in hand. Cuckoo Cola. She is, you know, who isn't? Who isn't weak? She makes the sign of the cross, too. Oh, does she? Yeah, she puts up her fingers and does the whole crossing fingers over to do the sign of the cross. And she's like, get that away from me. She's diabetic. Keep it away, foul creature. So, yeah, so she kind of, you know, takes him in and shows him Avenger Tower, which is just Darkwing Tower. But it's also pretty funny, too, because, like, you know, the, the Thunder Quack is there, but it looks, it's her jet, but it looks, you know... Thunderquack just looks like Darkwing's head, so the premise of this is that he just inherits all her stuff that just happens to be catered to him anyway. <laughs> but, you know, through all this, he hadn't had a mask or a cape. He was just kicking it in his jacket and hat, so she gives him the mask and she gives him the cape because, you know, when in doubt, accessorize, which is a very important lesson. And she also dubs him Darkwing Duck because Stinky is a bad name. And he's like, what does it mean? She's like, who cares what it means if it sounds cool? And you know what? Amen, sister. Then, very conveniently, they just happen to see Nick Duck's spaceship. And he is literally just cruising around, lasering the crap out of St. Bernard. (laughs) He's just lighting it up. He's just, you know, I guess comes to the planet over a desert. And the first thing he sees, he's just like, yeah, well, let's just mow this down. And you gotta, you gotta love him for that. Yeah, they, they hop into the Thunderquack and they give chase. He blasts them immediately and the Thunderquack disintegrates and they fall through a roof, smack dab, of course, into a vat of Cuckoo Cola. Did you notice when they're falling, that is the scene that they put on the DVD covers? No. I think it's volume two. There's like the okay. various, they're like redraws of scenes from the show and there's one of goslin lp and darkwing falling and i could not figure out where it was from and it was that part where they're falling from the sky that that was interesting oh man see that dvd said the art in that <laughs> oof oof oh man yeah so what i guess they just you know drew her regular clothes and not the avenger clothes i think she Is might what... actually be in her avenger clothes i'll have to double check hmm. that Hmm. Interesting. But yes, because they fall right into a vat of cuckoo cola, this begins Goslin's extended death scene. <laughs> and this is the second part of this episode where I just did not like it. I was like she's he carries her out onto the pavement and she's just completely bloated and like wobbling like jello <laughs> because she's so full of cuckoo cola and I hate it. It just was like, oh, this is terrible. I hate it. So then she does the fake out death thing. She has more psych out deaths than the Return of the King had fake out endings. And it's, you know, all like. Oh, Darkwing. You've got to take over for me. You've got to become a crime fighter. Goodbye. She pretends to die. She Three times. Three times she does it. And then when she finally does die, she just sports out a fountain of soda. <laughs> and I, I, I hate that too. <laughs> I think that was your slime moment. I didn't like it. I was not a fan. But then, you know, Mr. quote unquote all around nice guy launch pad is like, No! No, there'll never be a cartoon series based on her mythic exploits! And what's more, I'm out of a job. And then... They both turn and stare at her corpse. <laughs> and it changes to a new scene. <laughs> like, uh, what? Yeah, I mean, we could have probably done something different. Are you guys cannibals? <laughs> What's happening? I don't know. And that's it. And then we just go to Darkwing in his newly inherited tower immediately over his grief. I thought it it changed to the future again with Gazaloid and Honkulon and they're crying. Oh, right. Okay. And he's, yeah. Okay. So crying. But the Honkulon is a tough guy. He's just still blaming his allergies. He's not really sad. 
but then yeah, then it goes to to Darkwing in the tower where he's working on his alliteration and his all that nonsense. They hop back into another Thunderquack. They do. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, they they give chase, and it's this part made me laugh too because Drake is like, "Get us close to that, you know, get us close to his ship," and Launchpad just crashes into it. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll do it. That's pretty. That's pretty great. Can't can't get any closer to that. But then Darkwing Duck is finally about to face his foe and realizes that he doesn't know anything about being a crime fighter, but he has. All the memories of the people that he has met in his life on various planets, uh, reminding him of what he's learned and lots of reminders of things that he was taught that would come in handy one day. And we get our singular I am the terror speech in this episode, which is I am the hero that every culture and every world needs, (laughs) which is pretty bold talk from a guy who just said, I don't know how to fight crime. I am the terror that flaps in the night. I am the hero that every culture in every world needs. I am Darkwing Duck. Now that is an entrance. And then, you know, Negaduck uses that little evil turn handle on his chair to turn around and look at him. It could come in handy one day. Little throwaway thing we get from his dad. He's like, oh yeah, the gas gun, which we haven't seen since his planet exploded. He just had it on him that whole time. He, he just did. He just, I guess. And Negadek has his own equivalent, which he does not in the actual show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's true. That is true. And Negadek is thwarted very, very easily in this episode. You know, he just fires the gas gun and Negadek immediately drops his own and starts coughing. And then there's some off screen fighting that happens with Darkwing Duck victorious and glowing with heroism and that's basically it for that part of it and then the kids wake up in the museum and tour guide guy is standing over them with his weird little scribbly mustache is mad at children for surviving in a museum at night I guess you know he expected the whole Ben Stiller treatment and some dinosaur to eat them or something and they're like well we weren't alone we had the janitor here or and then, like, there hasn't been a janitor here in 50 years. Well, young men, what is that in your hand? That's not a handkerchief. It's a mask covered in your snot. And he puts it on the little mannequin that has Darkwing's costume on it. And the mannequin says thanks. In like a baby voice, kind of. And, yeah, in like a Darkwing baby voice. That's it. That's the end. And then he faints or dies. It's not clear. He just kind of drops and then his stiff corpse is just on the ground. <laughs> and then end credits. And that is it. That is the secret origin of Darkwing Duck, which is rooted in absolutely no timeline at all in the show. It never is mentioned again. It's just a fun throwaway episode that teases us that Negaduck was raised by space pirates. I have a theory. Oh. I don't take this theory seriously, but it's kind of fun to imagine. What if Darkwing Duck was telling the story, but it was all an exaggerated metaphor of actual events that happened? For example, maybe his parents really did die protecting him, or Negaduck's parents killed his parents, and he ended up orphaned. He ended up at a monastery, which would be the equivalent to an orphanage. I know he says in other episodes that he studied with the Tibetan yogis at one point in time. So maybe that is an exaggeration of that. And then I got nothing for the Herb Muddlefoot genie part. Well, because who else is going to grant all your wishes? Make all your wildest dreams come true. (laughs) So perhaps it's all just a huge exaggeration of true events. Possibly. I always thought that maybe Darkwing himself was an orphan who aged out of the system, and that's why he takes a liking to Goslin, because she she wasn't going to get adopted, probably, because all the would-be parents thought she was too much of a problem child. And maybe the same thing happened to Drake when he was young, if he was in the orphanage, and he got passed over. So perhaps 
part of him when he adopted her. It's just like, I'm not going to let that happen to her. I don't know. It's just a, a messed up theory that maybe there's some truth to the story. Like if it was Darkwing telling it and you know how he tends to exaggerate everything. What? Yeah, no, no. Because that definitely seems like the janitor is obviously him. Again, like even in the timeline of this episode, it doesn't make sense because they're talking about how, you know, Darkwing Duck was around 200 years ago. But this is obviously like janitor is Darkwing. Like that's pretty clear from the way that he talks about it and the way that you know he spins the story and all that stuff but isn't he a ghost that i guess that's implied because they're like well we had the janitor with us over the there is no janitor so i don't know i don't this see like this this episode has too many layers for me (laughs) i can't deconstruct it i can't wrap my hand around it you know maybe this ghost is just can't remember he can't remember his origin so he just cherry picks what he remembers from comic books that would probably be too. the most accurate answer of them yeah. all. But I really do yeah. wish we could see Negaduck raised by space pirates. Seriously. Or even just more of his parents, like his Zipdon parents are pretty great. <laughs> Basically, yeah, definitely. what's that show, Married with Children? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Al and Peg Bundy. This was fun. It just made me want to watch a proper Nikaduck episode, though. Because even in the overall scheme of it, he's not in it that much. No, unfortunately, he only really gets two scenes. Yeah, Three if you can't have very, as a baby. They are very good scenes, though. Okay, so we have our, our thoughts here. Any final thoughts on this episode? Well, what would you give it on the Quackerware freshness scale? Uh, Well, I would have to give it a... 3,000 wishes out of 5 because it has Herb Muddle Foot in it. Uh, but if it did not have Herb Muddle Foot in it, I'd probably give it like a, I would say maybe a, a 3 or a 4 out of 5. I can't really nail it down. It's not my favorite episode. It's not the best and it's not the worst. So I'm giving it a 4 out of 5. It's a Negaduck episode. It does tip the scales. It does. It really does. So. If it was a different character, I'd probably just be like, meh. <laughs> But yeah, he's great. He's such a fun villain because he's just so, so evil. Like, he's so extra and he has so much fun being evil. Yes. Yes, he's not a tortured soul. He's just, he's enjoying every second of it. And he's flying over the city, just lasering it to crap. Kills the local superhero and then just decides to do another round, I guess. Because <laughs> Why not? Leave. Yeah, he's like, you know what? I haven't leveled everything, so let me go back. And they're able to go back and stop him because he goes back. But, yeah, it's great. Love me some Negaduck. He's fantastic. And you can own him if you go to that website that was mentioned at the beginning of this episode. So, Secret Origins of Darkwing Duck. We did it. We watched it. How about we spin that wheel and see if we get a Negaduck episode? Oh, let's see. Spin, spin, spin him. Spinning! Spinning, spinning, spinning. <gasps> oh, baby. From our lips to Negaduck's mouth, we have life, the Negaverse, and everything. Ah! Silence. Are you there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, was, I was just so overcome with joy that I couldn't okay. even speak. <laughs> I just didn't know if I lost you. But yes, so this is exciting. We get Life, the Negaverse, and Everything, which is a really good one. I'm excited to watch this one. It's got everybody. It's got tons of Negaduck. It's got the Five. It's got the Negaverse. It's It's got her Muddlefoot and... God, yes! Leather Daddy, her (laughs) Muddlefoot. Where they're gonna eat him alive. It's a good episode, man. Oh, yes! <laughs> Double the herb. Double the trouble. The wheel blessed oh, us because we said so many nice things about Negaduck. We did. We did. But now we know who is behind the wheel. <laughs> it Thanks. would explain a lot. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for not making it be uh, getting antsy. So, okay, cool. So, I don't know that we're going to do this immediately no next episode will be a guest episode one of our pals will be coming on we've already recorded the episode so that one will come out next and then this 
next episode after that will be life, the negaverse, and everything. Da-da! Cool. Cool beans. I'm excited. We're going to watch a good one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, buddy. All right. So that's it for us today, guys. Thanks for listening. And remember, crime doesn't sleep and neither do we. Farewell, hero.